What if you had to make this kid look like he grew up to be this guy? Well, one of the main things you might need to change is the eye color. So that's what today's video is about. I had a few of these clips that I needed to change this kid's eye color, and I started with the normal method of tracking the eyes and linking a mask for the iris, and then even a separate mask for the pupil, but then I came up with a faster method, and I decided I should pass it on to you guys. You know, just to put into your VFX toolbox. This method uses Rotobrush 2.0 in After Effects. If you can work with 4K resolution and have a well-lit subject, it works very well. The shots that it doesn't work so well for are shots with a lot of motion blur on the face or clips of Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman. Her eyes and eyelashes are so dark that the rotoscope can't tell where her iris ends and the eyelashes begin. I did get one clip to kind of work, but as a rule, if your subject has almost black eyes with thick black eyelashes, it's going to cause some problems. But for most eyes, using this method to change the eye color works. You can also do some other cool effects with this technique. But the two main color changes that you will come across are changing light eyes to darker eyes and changing dark eyes to a lighter color. I'll show you how to do each. And if the darkness and brightness doesn't really change much, like just changing green to blue, it's even easier. Hey Shane, do it to my eyes. Okay, sure. <laughs> That's cool. The Sony a7S III actually tracks Donovan's eyes as if he had a real face. As if I don't, you don't have a real face. Check it out. Hey, do it to Josephine. You do it to Josephine. Don't tempt me. All right, let's jump into After Effects and get started. So I have this 4K clip in After Effects and my composition is set to 4K, which will give the rotor brush more data to analyze. So I select my clip and I duplicate it. Then I double click the top clip to open it up in a layer window and then I zoom in to see the eyes well. I select the roto brush tool from the top. I can change the size of the brush on a PC by holding down the control button and the left click button and then on the mouse just move up or down or you can go to the top and under windows select brushes and set diameter in the window that opens up i pick a size about half the size of the iris and i color in a little bit then in the effects window where the rotor brush effects are showing i change the quality from standard to best i color in both eyes if the brush selects something i don't want i can hold the alt button and the brush turns red and then i can click anything that i want the brush to deselect you can click the mouse and move it to create brush strokes, but sometimes you can get good results with just a single click on what you want to select or deselect. Now we want to step through our footage. You can either use this next button in the preview dropdown, or you can use page up and page down to step through. You can also use the space bar to just sort of let it play automatically and it will step through the frames as you watch closely to see if the brush gets outside of the iris. When it does, you just hit the space bar again to stop it from moving forward in the timeline. So I've stopped it here where she starts to blink because it's not staying on the irises quite right. I just use the select and the alt click to deselect and I make the selected area stay where it's supposed to throughout the blink. When I get through the blink, I use the space bar to go on and I see that it messes up and it selects some of the white parts of the eye. So I stop it with the space bar and then I use page up to go back to that frame and then I fix it. I continue those types of steps until I get all the way through the clip. When I'm finished and the selected area is staying on the iris the way it's supposed to, I hit freeze so that the brush will no longer analyze the clip. It will freeze all of my work as is. The freezing process will take a few minutes as it steps through all of the clips. If I want to adjust any of it more later, I can. I can just come back to this layer and unfreeze it and then do so on my adjustments and then freeze it again when I'm finished. So we're in the layer view for this clip, but we want to go back to the composition view now. So we click composition here. We have been working on the top layer and if we solo that layer now, we will see only the eyes. I unsolo it so I can see the eyes and the background layer and I drag in a curves effect into the top layer. This is where you can do an initial lightening or darkening depending on what you want. I'm going to lighten it up a little too much so I can soften the edges of the new eyes layer. So I go up to the rotor brush effect and I adjust the feathering and contrast until I get a setting I like. 
feathering works just like any other feathering effect, but the contrast will soften the contrast edge between the eye layer and the background layer. So both can be used to soften the edges. You can also use shift edge to grow or shrink the new eyes. Sometimes shrinking them just a little bit will leave dark rings that are often around the irises. From this point, I could create some cool vampire-like effects with just using the curves to brighten the eyes. But we're looking for a color change, so I'm going to drag in a tint effect. In this effect, you can either tint the blacks or the whites, but most of the times you'll be tinting the white. If you're tinting the black, you'll be affecting the color of the pupils. So I use the Map White 2 color selection and begin choosing a color. And remember, you can go back to your curves effect and adjust the brightness. After I play with these two effects a little bit, I get something I like. I went with an ice blue, which is a pretty strong color, but it shows the effect very well for this example. Keeping it subtle will usually look best, so be careful about letting your eyes get too bright or saturated with color. So now I can do a lot of cool things from this point. I can change your eyes to like red and get a supernatural type of feel. I could even add some glow and change the layer mode to screen. So I'm going to open up the stylized dropdown and drag in the glow effect. I ended up layering up three glow effects on top of each other and played with the settings and got some pretty nice glowing red eyes. And now I can pop back to my tint effect and choose a different color and it all automatically updates. I'd love to see what you guys make with this. If you want to leave links in the comments below, it's always interesting to see what you guys come up with. So the method that I just showed you is what I used to color the little boy's eyes that I talked about earlier. But instead of using the curves effect to lighten the eyes, I used it to darken them and then made them brown. But now I'm going to show you how to go from very dark eyes to light eyes. It has to be done a little differently. So in this clip of Anya Taylor-Joy, you can see that she has very dark eyes. Not quite black, but very dark. The first thing I want to do is select my layer and duplicate it. Then I double click the top layer and view it by itself as a layer. I go through the same process to start selecting the eyes with the roto brush. I make sure that I set the roto brush quality to best. I'm very careful to deselect any eyelashes that I accidentally select. After I finish with my selections, I can freeze my work and wait for it to finish. When it's done, I go back to my composition view and if I solo the top layer, I can see just the eyes. I go ahead and unsolo it and rename the top layer to eyes, which I didn't do before, but it really does help to keep things labeled. Now I drag in the curves effect and brighten the eyes up a lot so I can adjust the feathering and contrast in the roto brush effect. I also adjust the shift edge just a little bit to create that dark ring around the iris. This already has an interesting effect, but I want to add some color, so I drag in the tint effect, and again, I adjust the Map White 2 box, and I select a color that I like. After I let this play through a little bit, I can see that it gets a little weird when her face is moving and has motion blur, but there's a button for that. In the Roto Brush Effects dropdown, towards the bottom, I click the Motion Blur button and it creates some motion blur for the eyes and it fixes it. Now, when I watch it through at full speed, it looks really good. You can choose different colors and brightnesses, but remember, if it gets too bright or saturated, it will look less real and a little more supernatural. Sometimes, I actually drag in a hue and saturation effect just to remove some of the saturation. So here's the before and here's the after. I'm going to change the mode of the eyes layer to lighter color. You can try some other modes like screen or add, but lighter color seems to work best for me. Pretty powerful stuff. So that's how to change eye color with Roto Brush 2.0. Thanks for checking it out. And if you've subscribed, click the bell icon below and you'll get notifications whenever we release new videos. Okay, I'm gonna go set up a date with Josephine for Donovan. Really? You really are? You promise? Yeah, I'll talk to her for you. I'll see what I can do. Nice.